Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I can see lots and lots of you coming onto the call here. Our participants are going rapidly up. My name is Amy and I'm part of the education team here at Childnet, part of the UK Safer Internet Centre. And my name is Phoebe, also part of the team at Childnet. We're so pleased to have some time today to tell you a bit more about the upcoming Safer Internet Day celebrations including all of the resources available to help you run activities in your school or youth group setting. Now, before we get started, we want to let you know that the Q&A feature is open and we'll be leaving some time at the end of today's 30 to 40 minute session to answer any questions you may have. Please do click on Q&A. It might be visible at the top or the bottom of your screen and submit any questions to us there. We'll also find the separate chat feature, which is disabled for you, but we'll be posting lots of useful links there as we go. Now, in Phoebe and I's work with the Childnet Education team, a big part of our job is traveling to schools around the country. We talk to children aged three to 18 years old, parents, carers, and professionals about online safety. Everyone in the team here also comes from an education background. So we know firsthand how valuable your time is and how many plates you've got to keep spinning. Our aim today is to tell you everything you need to know about the upcoming Safer Internet Day campaign and most importantly, signpost you to the various resources available completely for free. So you may well have participated in Safer Internet Day before, so it'd be great to know if that's the case. So we've popped a quick poll on the screen that hopefully you'll be able to see now. So please do submit your answers to our first question. Have you participated in Safer Internet Day before? day before, and then our second question, have you ever used any of the UK Safer Internet Centre resources in previous years? Okay, I can see lots of people engaging with that poll now, which is fantastic to see. Um, we've got lots of answers coming in. Well, it's great to see that so many of you have joined us in celebrating Safer Internet Day before, and we're really excited to have you back. And a warm welcome to all of you who are maybe joining us for the first time. So whether you're brand new to the campaign or you've celebrated with us before, let's start with a quick introduction to what Safer Internet Day is all about. Absolutely. Thanks, Phoebe. So Safer Internet Day is a global campaign celebrated in over 100 different countries every year. It normally falls on a Tuesday in early February, and this year's Safer Internet Day will be celebrated on Tuesday, the 7th of February, 2023. Now, in the UK, the day is coordinated by the UK Safer Internet Centre. That's a partnership between three organisations, Childnet, the Internet Watch Foundation and SWGFL. It's worth checking out each of those organisations individually as there's loads of resources and support available for you in your role. So for Safer Internet Day, we want to inspire a national conversation about using technology responsibly, respectfully, critically and creatively, empowering children and people to speak up about their digital lives and adults to engage and listen to develop a deeper understanding of their experiences. So last year, the campaign reached over half of children and young people in the country and a third of UK parents and carers. This was only possible thanks to the incredible support from schools, youth groups, libraries, police forces, charities, government, and the internet industry. So why should you and your pupils or learners participate in Safer Internet Day? Every year, we run a survey after the day to gauge the impact the campaign can have. Last year, 80% of the young people we spoke to said they felt more confident about what to do if something is worrying them online. Furthermore, 72% of them told us they had spoken to someone about staying safe online after hearing about the day. Something we hear a lot from schools is the challenges of engaging parents and carers with online safety. So the fact that 59% of the young people we spoke to had a conversation with a parent and carer about their online life as a result of the day is really fantastic news. We also spoke to parents and carers themselves about their experiences of the day. 67% of them told us they had talked to their child about using the internet safely, and 69% said they understand more about how to keep their child safe online. 
And one in four said their child spoke to them specifically about something that had been worrying them online. So when you combine that with teachers in school who participated in the day, where 41% of those we spoke to said the conversations started by the, complex, by the campaign led to disclosures about potential safeguarding issues online. That's a lot of young people getting support and advice who otherwise might have been facing that problem on their own. So we know that participating in Safer Internet Day, raising the profile of online safety and starting those conversations about life online can really have you know, a very real and very important impact for the children and young people that you work with. I'm sure you're all very familiar with the importance of online safety. The internet and technology is a huge part of all our lives, including children and young people. And whilst we know that can bring opportunities, excitement, and so many other positives, there are always gonna be risks. As professionals, we all have that duty of care to safeguard the young people we work with, and I'm sure you'll agree that online safety is a vital part of this. So we also know lots of you are already doing amazing work in this space, whether you're delivering messages during computing lessons, assemblies, RSC, or have a really comprehensive whole school approach. We feel confident that Safe Internet Day has a role to play. We see it as being a great opportunity to really engage young people with the topic of online safety to keep it at the forefront of everyone's minds. It's a chance to celebrate the role that technology has to play and the opportunities it can offer, whilst also starting important conversations about young people's online experiences. I will also say it is also really, really good fun and participating means joining in with thousands of other schools all across the country. Plus, whatever your role, we have loads of resources to help you get involved with the day, whether you have just five minutes, an hour, or even want to dedicate a whole week to celebrations. So every year in the UK, we choose a different theme for Safer Internet Day. And previous years have included important topics such as reliability online, consent, online identity. And last year, we focused on respect and relationships online, especially in gaming environments. So we'd now like to introduce a special guest, Will Gardner, Director of the UK Safer Internet Centre, who's going to tell you about the theme for Safer Internet Day 2023. Thank you very much, Phoebe um, and Amy, and welcome everybody. Um, just when we, try, when we try to work out what it is we need to focus on for Safer Internet Day each year, the team work with focus groups with children and young people in primary schools and in secondary schools, and this year, we also used our youth advisory board, where we had a two-day residential, uh, to, to sound ideas and hear their feedback about what we need to be talking about. One of the things that really came through in those conversations was that the young people really value the input that they have in the schools, the, the lessons they have around online safety. Those are important to them, as well as the conversations that they're having with parents and carers. But... They said they don't always reflect the realities of their everyday online lives. And this was something that we felt that we could really encourage and empower young people to be able to speak and share more about their online lives in order to better inform those conversations. Now, with the data that Amy and Phoebe have already shared with you, you can see the power that uh, Safe for Instance Day brings for enabling those conversations to happen, both between parents and carers and children and young people and between schools and children and young people. So we really wanted to focus on that. The theme you can see on the screen now in front of you is want to talk about it, making space for conversations online. And a lot of that work will be about giving um, uh, teachers and parents and carers the tools to be able to begin those conversations. But we really want to be lighting the fire of the conversations at the end of the young people. We really want to be encouraging them to, to speak up and share their experience, both positive and the things that they're worried about online. And that's what we're hoping we're gonna get from this theme. Fantastic, thank you so much, Will. We really are so excited about this year's theme. And we want it to be an opportunity for all of us to kickstart conversations about what issues matter the most to young people online and the kinds of experiences they are you know, really having. So importantly, those conversations will allow us to support young people to build their resilience and to give them advice and tools that are relevant to what they're going through on, online you know, all year round. 
So hopefully we've sold you on the theme. So we're now gonna spend a bit of time exploring the resources available to support you in engaging with Safer Internet Day 2023. So these are all available for free on the UK Safer Internet Centre website. And you can see the URL on the screen right now. Great, okay, let's start with the downloadable activity packs. As in previous years, we have produced these for use with children and young people aged three to seven, 7 to 11, 11 to 14, and 14 to 18, and they're all available in both English and Welsh. Within those packs, you'll find a bank of activities to start conversations. We also have activities that are designed to be sent home to use with parents, carers, and families. Activities that allow children and young people to take the lead, perhaps with their peers or in their local community, and activities that will help young people advocate for change at a national level. The other really important part of the resources is making sure that young people feel empowered and supported in speaking up. We know they have lots to say, but not all of them will be ready to share, and some of them may have had difficult or upsetting experiences online. So as well as guidance to help adults navigate those situations sensitively, we've also got activities that signpost young people to places they can go for more support and activities that support digital well-being as well. Okay, I think we might be ready to take a look at the resources. So I'm just going to get those up on the screen. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm gonna use the PDFs as they'll appear when you download them. And Phoebe and I are going to give you a guided tour of some of our favorite activities. We're gonna go through pack by pack, but I would really recommend sticking around and listening to the full session. All the activities are designed to be adaptable. So even those packs designed for older or younger children than the learners you work with may still have something you want to try out. We've also got a few things that are suitable for everyone, which we'll come back to at the very end. So let's start with the pack for use with three to sevens. So as I start scrolling thing, uh, start scrolling through even, one useful thing to note is that here on the contents page, each of these items are hyperlinked. So if you spot something on the contents and you want to click straight through it, that is something that you can do once you've opened them on your own device. As we scroll onwards, we've got a little bit of an overview of the theme that Will has just talked us through. And we've got a little bit further on 10 things you need to know about participating in Safer Internet Day. So this is where you'll find some really important guidance, including advice about establishing a safe and supportive learning environment. There's a URL just there that you can click through to. And another, a little bit lower down, down here, that has advice for responding to safeguarding concerns or potential disclosures. Now, naturally, your school or setting safeguarding procedures and policies need to be your first port of call here but there's lots of advice and support available should you need it. Now, all of these opening pages can be found in whichever age pack you download, but from this section, from page seven onwards, is where we have activities more specific to each age range. So here on page seven, you can see that title, Ready to Get Started. You'll find this section in all four of the packs, but the content is different. What we've done here is a suggestion of three simple activities that when delivered together should take approximately 45 minutes to an hour. So depending on the depth of the discussions that you're having with your learners, this is really designed to fill a lesson. For the three to sevens, you can see the first activity here is to read Hanny and the Magic Window. If you've participated in Safer Internet Day before, you will know this is something we often do. So we take a book or a story and we use that as the starting point for the activities at this age range. Hanny and the Magic Window is an online safety story that doesn't have any technology in it. I've got the PDF up here on the screen. Um, it's a rhyming story whose main character, Hanny, has a magic window at home. Through that window, she can see all kinds of wonderful things all across the world, much like we can when we're using internet and technology. Unfortunately, one day Hanny sees something upsetting in the window. Now there's no specifics about what that is, but we can see the impact it has on her. And this story is really about digital well-being, recognizing how a negative online experience can impact us and the importance of talking about our feelings with people who can help. This ties into our key message for children of this age about telling someone if something online worries or upsets them. Okay, so if I hop back across to the pack, 
We use a honey story in a few different ways. And I know that all of those incredible early years practitioners out there will have some amazing creative ideas to bring this story to life. We've made suggestions like creating a magic window role play area or making your own magic windows to celebrate the amazing games and other things we can find online. But within this pack, we also have activities that aren't linked directly to the book. So you can see on screen the resources for a board game, which we hope will give children those practical skills in asking for help. When they land on a help square, they take one of these cards and they have to discuss who and how they would ask for help in each example before they can move on. Other highlights are the internet interview. Let me scroll through and find that one for you. Here we go, the internet interview, designed to be sent home. Children and parents can ask each other these questions. And we've also got another simple worksheet a little bit further on. There's that one gone down here. Um, so if you are looking for something really quick and easy to print off and go, there's lots of things there. One thing I will flag for all of you is that all of these designed worksheets and resources, which you might want to print, but which are really brightly colored. Well, if you scroll right through to the end of the resources here, you will see that we have also got those in black and white as well. So a little bit easier to print. Okay, let's turn our attention now to the pack for seven to 11s. Again, we've got three activities at the start, which when delivered together should fill a 45 minute or hour long lesson. I'm actually gonna focus on some of the shorter activities for those of you who may not have a full hour slot. So first of all, we have the mini milestones activity. This is one that we have delivered with our youth advisory board in the past. The idea is you set up a timeline, perhaps on a wall or an empty floor space, and you mark out the different age milestones, different um, age ages, and then you can choose from the different suggestions that we've given on the next page. So there's loads and loads of them there. Get young people to work together to decide where they would position each of these online experiences, each of these milestones on that timeline. So at what age generally did they start using emojis, for example? You can see how this could give a real insight into what your learners are actually getting up to, what they've already experienced, and perhaps what you might need to tackle in your online safety provision in the future as well. As with the three to seven pack, we also have activities that are very specifically designed to engage parents, carers and families at home. I think these would work really well as homework tasks that could be sent home for families to complete together. And I want to highlight in particular, ABC, how well do you know me, which is probably my favorite activity from this pack. I actually delivered this with a group of seven to 11 year olds in school quite recently, and it went down so well. The game, the idea is you cut up the cards and choose someone to pick one at start. They read out the scenario at the top. So for example, I'm struggling to keep my eyes open while watching some funny videos. And then they read out the suggestions of what they might do in that situation. So A, splash water on my face and get back to it. B, go to bed. Or C, wake up on the sofa. The other players have to predict what they think this person might do in that situation. And once they've talked about it, maybe voted on the answer, the person who drew the card reveals what they would actually do. And if anyone got that right, then they can take a turn at picking the next card. When I played this in school, they loved it so much. They liked the competition element. They liked testing how much they knew about each other. They liked talking about the sensible answers, but also acknowledging which answers might be a little bit more realistic, which of course is where we can bring in that learning, bring in those online safety messages. Final highlights in this pack, we've got activities you might be able to fit into other curriculum areas. We've got drama activities, and we've even got a PE activity, the online safety assault course. But for now, I'm going to hand over to Phoebe, who's going to take you through the resources for 11 to 14s and 14 to 18s. Absolutely. Thanks, Amy. So we're moving on a bit. We're thinking more uh, for those older young people now. And we're going to start with the 11 to 14s pack. And I wanted to start by highlighting an activity that you can find as part of the lesson plan at the beginning of the pack. It's an activity that actually appears in the 7 to 11 resources and the 14 to 18 resources, but it is, of course, adapted slightly for those differing ages. So this activity that you can see on the screen now asks learners to think about what online issues matter the most to them. We've provided a list of online issues to start with, things that young people might be aware of, like fake news and misinformation or excessive time spent online. However, it's definitely a list that we want young people to add to and tweak as well. 
The idea is that in pairs or as a group, they take each of these online harms and map them on a graph that you can see on the screen there as an example. So this graph is something that you would need to replicate for the activity that could be maybe on a, on a wall in the classroom or an, on an interactive whiteboard maybe. So across the bottom of the graph, that's where we're asking young people to think about the frequency of those online issues. So the more frequent they think that they happen, the further to the right they're going to want to map it. Then up the side of the graph, we've got the perceived level of harm for children and young people their age. How dangerous do they think that this issue might be for a young person who is experiencing it? And obviously, the higher it goes up, you know, the higher the level of harm. So we've run this activity before, and it's always generated a lot of conversation about the impact of these potential online safety issues and how often young people think they're happening. And I think that by running this activity, you should hopefully have a really clear picture of those issues positioned in that top far corner that the young people that you work with think are you know, happening the most often and are the most dangerous. And again, this will certainly give you some clues as to which topics you might need to be tackling in your online safety provision in the future. So the next activity that I want to highlight is a quick and simple one, and it's called app analysis. And we know that often in secondary schools, if you don't have teaching responsibilities for PSHE or for computing, then potentially you may only have a few minutes, perhaps in form time or at the start of another subject lesson to focus on online safety. So in app analysis, you display the icon of a well-known app of your choice, uh, potentially one that you've heard your learners talking about. And this could be on the board when they first come into the room. And then we've provided some discussion questions that you can use that consider the positives, the risks, and also an opportunity for learners to share any online safety advice they have in relation to that app. Next up, we have Opinion Compass. Um, from my own work in schools, I know that sometimes teenagers can be reluctant to participate or to engage with online safety discussions, but that a strong opinion or a slightly controversial statement can be the thing that hooks them in. So we've put together a list of eight different statements designed to be shared with learners so that they can choose whether they agree, disagree, or if they're undecided on them. Potentially, these could then lead on to a debate. So we've tried to choose statements that are going to provoke a response, and you can hopefully maybe see one of them on the screen there, which is one of the first ones. Social media is too addictive and a waste of time. The final two activities that I want to show you from this pack both come from the same section about encouraging children and people to tell someone about their online safety concerns. Amy mentioned earlier that this is a key message for three to sevens, but we know that as they get older and maybe they're more independent online, young people can be less likely to reach out and get the help that they need. So these activities are designed to make sure that learners feel confident speaking up and accessing support, whatever form that might take. The first activity is called Take a Seat, and it has statements that have been compiled from conversation that we've had with young people about what barriers might prevent them from reaching out to an adult if they're experiencing an online issue. So you pick a learner to represent an opinion and all the other learners need to give them advice or challenge their opinion and try to persuade them why speaking to someone is still the best thing to do. So an example of one of these statements of, and opinions that we're providing is, I've been involved with being mean to someone online but I think it's gone too far now. I don't want to tell an adult because I'm worried I'll get into trouble. So this turns the typical dynamic in online safety on its head because you know, rather than us and you telling young people that they should tell an adult, the onus is on them to convince each other that this is a helpful thing to do. In a similar vein, we also have an activity called trusted adults. That's a phrase that young people hear a lot when they're growing up. And this activity is about reminding 11 to 14 year olds how they can identify a trusted adult and getting them to reflect on what online issues they might want to share with a trusted adult, as well as discussing the situations in which they'd be more reluctant to do so. Again, I think that the conversations taking place during this activity will you know, actually be really helpful in identifying what support you can offer learners in the future. 
Okay, right, let's move on to the fourth and the final pack, and that's for 14 to 18 year olds. So similar to the previous packs, it starts with that lesson plan format, which includes a similar risk mapping activity to the one that we discussed for the 11 to 14s. It, it, it's also got quick activities, such as a would you rather game, and we've got a tech timeline activity, which is similar to the mini milestones one from the 7 to 11 pack. But obviously at this age, it covers a broader range of online safety, uh, online experiences, and is an opportunity for young people to reflect on how things have changed as they've got older. Um, we've got a quiz activity, and this is called Higher or Lower, which uses statistics from popular online platforms. And we have this activity that's called Quote to Quote that you can see on the screen. So our fantastic youth ambassador groups who are all aged 13 to 18 have helped us generate this activity. They've provided these fantastic quotes reflecting on the theme, and we've used these to put together some conversation starters. So as we go through the pack, we've got other ideas for how children and young people can share their thoughts about the internet. For example, this school tech takeover, something we've seen schools pull off in previous years very successfully. So this sees you giving young people responsibility for your school social media feeds. But please don't panic. <laughs> they don't need to have you know, direct access for this. It could be about them suggesting hashtags, providing quotes or tips that you can then, of course, um, or the tech team be, be um, put online and shared with your followers. And the final activity, which I want to share from this pack, can actually be found in each of the packs from seven to 11 upwards. And that's our youth charter. So this is an activity that invites schools and youth settings across the country to think about the role young people have in advocating for change at a national level. We want this year's theme to go beyond conversations between young people and their families or young people and their teachers. We also want their voices to be heard more widely and by the people who have power to enact real change. So every year we speak with children and young people in the run up to the day and we share their thoughts and experiences with government and the internet industry through our youth charter. So in this activity, we're asking you to work with your learners to develop your own youth charter. So you can see the template that hopefully is going to appear on the screen now. Yep. And the idea is that you can use this as a conversation starter and work with your learners to answer the questions. Once completed, this can be shared with parents and carers or your school community. But we'd also love for you to share it with us. In fact, if you head to our website, you'll find a short form where you could submit the key suggestions from your children and young people and even scan or a picture of your completed template. So post Safer Internet Day, we'll compile all the resources together and create a nationally representative youth charter. So if every person on this webinar today delivered this activity with just 10 young people, we'd be looking at thousands of young people's voices being amplified on a huge scale. We'll also be publishing the charter on our website so young people can see how we're using their responses to hold government and the internet industry accountable. Fantastic. Thank you, Phoebe. So that concludes our tour of the resource packs. I hope that's been useful and do download the resources yourself. There are loads of other activities that we haven't gone through in detail today. If you have got another five minutes or so, the final thing we want to share in today's session is some of the other content and materials you can find on the UK Safer Internet Centre website. So let me just switch my screen share around so that you can see the website. There we go. Okay, um, so when you first land on the page, and we shared a couple of links that, that will take you through to this website in the chat, there are lots of different things for you to explore, including, if you look at these tabs in the middle here, those educational resources that we've just been looking at. Yes, definitely. And it's also worth mentioning, you can find assembly slides on this page, which introduce the theme of the, for the day and challenge young people to start a conversation about life online themselves. We've also included a slide for you to complete ahead of delivering the assembly with details of a staff member in your setting who young people can reach out to if they have an online safety concern. For example, your safeguarding lead. 
And if I take us back to that main landing page, you will see that we also have a section specifically for parents and carers. Now, in previous years, you might have used our downloadable pack for this year, uh, for, for this audience, but this year it is all web-based. So you can share a link or pick and choose particular segments that might be most relevant to your parent and carer community. There's loads of useful advice in there, including tips to help parents and carers start conversations at home, advice on talking about difficult topics, plenty of guidance on reporting and other ways to respond if things have gone wrong online. And we also signpost to specific advice on lots of key online safety issues. And as we do every year, we also have some films you might want to share with your learners. These feature young people from across the country sharing about their online experiences and can be a great prompt for conversation. Additionally, for the first time ever, we're inviting all schools, youth groups and other settings to submit their own content to our fantastic video wall. So there's lots of clips already uploaded and you can sort them using the tags at the top. And we'd love for you to support any children aged seven and up in recording and submitting their own thoughts. Uh, maybe you could even set up a diary room style booth to film submissions on Safer Internet Day. Absolutely. And we also have our annual social media template available both here and um, in those downloadable packs. So I'll click through to that. You can use this template with the children and young people you work with to help them consider what they want others to do to support them online and to explore how we can all work together to create a better internet by challenging ourselves, those around us and the apps we interact with online. So you ask learners to fill the template with ideas about what online safety means to them. And then if possible, take a photo of the decorated templates, whether this is with the children and young people or adults who created them or not, and share those on your school or settings social media accounts. We also know lots of people use these templates to create incredible displays. As with all our resources, it's about adapting them to work for you. So on the topic of social media, you can also find suggested tweets in the resource packs. And we have a full social media pack, including lots of graphics, which is available to download here. We'll be retweeting and engaging with as many, as you of as, many of you as possible on Safer Internet Day itself. So use the hashtag, hashtag Safer Internet Day. So keep an eye on our accounts and subscribe to our newsletters as well to hear about the final few resources still to come ahead of the day. Specifically, we've got three incredible interactive quizzes co-produced with children young people, some simple visual materials that are designed to support learners with special educational needs and disabilities and additional learning needs, and top tips for use with all ages and parents and carers. So we are nearly at the end of our session today, though with time for questions, I can see we've had a couple of those come in. Do submit any, submit any more that we haven't answered yet. Before we get to those, we have one important request of all of you in attendance today. Every year, we ask any organisation participating in Safer Internet Day activities here in the UK to register as a supporter of the day. To register, you need to complete a really short form on the UK Safer Internet Centre website. And in return, your school or setting will get a certificate of participation and will appear on our incredible supporters map. There's already hundreds of organisations signed up. Uh, your logo and participation will be recorded alongside all of those other amazing organisations participating in the day. And really importantly, those supporter numbers also help us reach out to our funders um, who enable us to provide all of the resources we've just discussed today completely for free and maintain that meaningful impact in young people's online lives, which we talked about earlier. I'm going to ask my colleague to pop the link to register as a supporter in the chat for you if it's not there already please do take the time to submit the form if you can and help make this year's Safer Internet Day the biggest yet. Okay, let's have a little look and see what questions we might have to answer. So let me just get them up so I can see what I'm looking at. Okay, I have got one here about will the recording be available afterwards? It looks like some people have had a little bit of difficulty joining. Absolutely. Um, we'll be sending our, a follow up email around tomorrow. There'll be uh, the recording available there and all of the links that we've talked about um, today. Um, 
we have also got a question about whether the resources are only available as PDF, particularly in relation to sending bits and pieces home for parents and carers. So the parent and carer resources are all web-based, so you can find those on the UK Safer Internet Centre website. The teaching and learning resources are those ones that are available as a PDF. Um, some, are you, some of those kind of pages you might want to print out and send home. You can always kind of screenshot them if you want to if you want to send them home electronically. Um, the other thing I would say is that you do want activities specifically to send home that families can do together that are available electronically. When those interactive quizzes go live, I think they're a really, really good one um, for families to do together. Um, it's just a quick link that you can send home um, and hopefully they should start lots of conversations as well. Um, I'm just having a little look to see what other questions. Yes, so we've got a few questions about the special the resources for young people with special educational needs and disabilities. So the first thing that I would flag is all of our resources are designed to be adaptable for whatever setting that you're using in them, uh, that you're using them in. So we would really hope that you can find something within the packs that you can kind of pick apart or that you can um, that you can adapt to make work for the needs of your learners. As we mentioned, we do have some resources coming for young people specifically with those additional needs. They're really visual materials that are designed to support the, um, the existing activities in the packs. Some of them are the same activities, but with more visual content and maybe simplified or streamlined, um, just that they're really appropriate for those young people who might have additional needs. Um, there's a reference here specifically to um, kind of symbolized resources. Um, we do have one activity, I think it's in the three to seven pack, which draws on, now Phoebe, I'm hoping you might remember the name because I can't remember the name, is it widget symbols? Yeah, that's correct. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, so we've got one activity that does use some of those widget symbols. Um, we are also going to be doing a reading of Hanny and the Magic Window, which will be translated into British Sign Language as well. So that should be available in the near future too. Um, I'm just scrolling through to see if I missed any. We've talked about um, resources for young people with special educational needs. Um, I've got a question about guest speakers or visitors to inspire children in primary schools. I'll just take this opportunity to say that ChildNet do um, have, as our education team, do go out into schools and deliver sessions with young people. We aren't able to offer them on Safer Internet Day itself, and, and we're looking um, increasingly booked up for, for the term ahead, but do have a look at the ChildNet website and get in touch um, if you would like um, us to, to come and work with you. I've got question about the primary assemblies and do we have assemblies or a slideshow for a parent workshop so the primary uh, assemblies can be found on the same page on the UK Safer Internet Centre website as the education resources I don't know if we can get that link in the chat again just the page um, with the education resources on the assemblies are available to download in that exact same place we don't currently have a slideshow specifically for a parent workshop that's um, been developed for Safer Internet Day. However, again, on the ChildNet website in our resources hub, we do have a set of um, slides that are designed for schools to deliver to parents and carers on the topic of online safety more generally. So that's definitely something you could adapt and make use of in relation to Safer Internet Day. Um, We've got a link to Hanny and the Magic Window, which has been dropped in the chat off the back of one of the questions there. And um, yes, ChildNet will come to schools in Northern Ireland. Uh, just to be really upfront, we do currently charge for our visits in schools, um, but we never want cost to be a barrier to young people accessing our messages. So if you're working to the budget, do let us know um, and we'll be able to have conversations around making that work. We do those sessions in primary schools and they are available virtually as well. Okay, lots of questions. I'm just scrolling back through. We'd like to do an activity with parents and carers as well as young people. So it's a question from Megan. Are there any activities you think would work well to do with a parent and carer group? What a great question. Do you know, do you know what? I've, 
I feel like my immediate answer to that is potentially a little bit of a, a cop out because I think all of the materials would work well with parents and carers and young people together. Um, I think all of those conversations around, um, if we think about the risk mapping activities that Phoebe talked about, you can get that in the 11 to 14 pack, 14 to 18 pack. And there's also a simplified version in the seven to 11 pack as well. That's a really interesting one that families could kind of look at together, that parents and carers could think about, could do comparisons between when children and young people think things are happening and when parents and carers think things are happening. Um, that could lead to some really interesting discussions that obviously tie in really, really nicely with the theme. Um, but I would really hope that actually any number of the activities from the packs you could pick up and, and make work with, with those mixed groups of parents, carers and children and young people at the same time. Is there anything, Phoebe, I don't know um, if there's any questions that I've maybe missed anything on, if there's anything that you can see that I've not covered. Um, I'm just having another little scroll. I think that's potentially all of them. I think there's one that we maybe missed out, which was um, someone as children registered as um, visually impaired. Just wondering ah. if materials were adapted at all. That is a great question. Do you know what? Uh, that is something that I think we can take away and have a think about, um, particularly for next year. Um, that's not something that we are currently able to offer, but it's definitely something that we'll continue to look at. Um, so thank you for that comment. That's really helpful um, and useful feedback for us to move forward with. Okay, I think... We will call it there then. Um, so yeah, I don't think we've got any more questions to cover. No, I don't think so. Unless anyone's got any burning questions they want to want to say now, I think we've pretty much come to the end. And as Amy said, all of the materials and are, are adaptable, and we hope that you'll you'll find them adaptable for any children and people that you know you're working with.